tracking major heat across the DMV. I have your forecast. It's coming up. Beating the heat in the district, the splash pads and outdoor pools opening this week. Virginia primary day is here. Voting I think is very important. Especially like for the younger generation to vote. We're tracking the results in some of the biggest races. Tonight Alexandria has a new mayor coming up. Who's taking over the helms of this Virginia city? And a new police chief in Montgomery County. A look at the man taking the reins in Maryland's most populated county. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Uh, good evening and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 10 on DCW 50. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Tosin Fakile. Chris Flanagan has the night off. We are in a DMV first warm day. All day, adults and kids alike have been trying to stay cool, hitting pools and splash pads. It's still a challenge and local governments also opening up indoor events to keep kids moving while out of the heat. Now, this is a live look from our rooftop camera toward Reagan National Airport on this warm night. Now, the heat expected to last all week long. Let's get over uh, let's check on the forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. All right, Janessa, these temperatures just keep soaring. Yeah, we continue to uh, deal with really high pressure taking over across uh, the region. We're seeing a, a ton of clearing at this point. Uh, temperatures along with dew points, they remain pretty high at the 10 o'clock hour into the upper 60s to uh, lower 70s. There's a ton of moisture in the atmosphere with heat index uh, the feel like right now, 82 to about 83 degrees. From Loudoun County, uh, it is a little bit warmer. I see you, Frederick, kind of the higher elevation, 91 right now. Now. So it's still very mild across the region. As temperatures drop tonight, we're only going to be dropping into uh, the upper 60s to lower 70s across uh, the region. It is a little bit cooler for Annapolis into uh, Baltimore County. So tomorrow morning, uh, it feels a little different. We're going to lose some of this humidity going into your Juneteenth. I know there's many festivities that are outside, still asking you not to be outside for a prolonged period of time. But by 9 o'clock, we're sitting into the lower 80s. I have more on this forecast coming up. And just in time, the district is opening nine outdoor pools for the Juneteenth holiday, and one pool is located in every ward, and two are east of the Anacostia River, and they will be open from 10 a.m. through 6 p.m. Our Dave Laval has more on the openings and how to make the most fun of it ahead at 10.30. And of course, be sure to visit DCNewsNow.com for a list of outdoor pools, cooling centers, and other resources around the DMV. Just hover over the weather tab at the top, then click DMV Extreme Heat in the drop down menu. And of course, you can scan this QR code on your screen for a quick way to download our DC News Now weather app. It's free in the App Store and in Google Play. Now is your local election headquarters and the results for Virginia's primary elections are in. We'll begin in District 7. Where we're tracking the Democratic race for the House and Eugene Bindeman leads with 49% of the race, 49% uh, of the vote. And DC News Now's Max Marcilla is in Fredericksburg where Bindeman declared victory. Here in Virginia's 7th Congressional District is expected to be one of, if not the most competitive races in Virginia here in November. And now we know who the Democrat is who will try to keep the seat blue. It's Eugene Vindman, who is best known for essentially blowing the whistle that led to former President Trump's first impeachment back when he was with the National Security Council. And he announced victory pretty early on tonight and gave a speech shortly after. And in his speech, he talked about a number of the things he hopes to bring to Congress. He wants to be a moderate voice, also wants to protect a woman's right to choose here in Virginia and across the country. And he also spent a good time of it trying to cast just a big difference between his values and the Republican he's going to face off against in November. We got a chance to ask him about that shortly after he gave his victory speech. What will you tell voters is the difference between you and your Republican opponent? Look, there couldn't be greater, there couldn't be a, a greater differences between us. I am for defending rights. I'm for preserving fundamental rights and freedoms and therefore taking them away. Uh, 
the, the right to an abortion is the first one on the chopping block. IVF is next, contraception is next. I have no doubt in my mind. And whoever wins this seat will take over the seat currently held by Representative Abigail Spamberger, who is stepping down at the end of her term so she can run for governor. Reporting in Fredericksburg, Max Marcella, DC News Now. All right, thank you, Max. And staying in U.S. House District 7, we're also following the House Republican race in Fredericksburg. Derek Anderson leads by 46% of the vote. Cameron Hilton trails with 37%. The Associated Press has called this for Anderson on the Republican field. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg picks up our team coverage with more. Yeah, a lot of excitement here at Highmark Brewery in Fredericksburg. Derek Anderson taking to the stage tonight to celebrate him being the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party here in District 7, hoping to flip that seat that has been held by Abigail Spanberger since 2018. Now, Anderson is a former Green Beret in the Army. He is an attorney, and he wants to flip this seat. He took the stage tonight saying that he wants to focus on the border, he wants to focus on inflation and also foreign policy looking stronger, in his opinion, to those uh, countries who are against us, including Iran, Russia, and China. Now, Anderson uh, took to the stage thanking his supporters. Here's what he had to say. We will make living more affordable. It's time Washington be reminded that their policies are impacting each of us more than they understand. And it starts right here in our pocketbooks our wallets, and at our kitchen tables. Now, U.S. House Republican leadership was backing Anderson, so he has that going for him. But there is, of course, an uphill battle because Abigail Spanberger has held this seat since 2018. Republicans hoping to flip it in November. In Fredericksburg, Daniel Hamburg, D.C. News Now. All right, Daniel, thank you. And some other races we are watching tonight. House District 11, Jerry Connolly leading that race. The Associated Press called it for Connolly at about 8 o'clock tonight with 85% of the vote. We head to the Republican primary for U.S. Senate, and this is for who will challenge Virginia incumbent Senator, De Democratic Senator Tim Kaine. The Associated Press called that for Hunk Cow. Uh, he was endorsed by former President Donald Trump. To more of the local races in the Commonwealth in Arlington, the Democratic County board race. Right now, J.D. Spain in the lead with 32% of the votes. A few points behind, Natalie Roy with 29% of the votes and Tenley Peterson with 24% of the votes, James DeVita at 10%. In Alexandria, the city council there, John Taylor Chapman with 12% of the vote, 97% of the precincts reporting. Sarah Badgley very close behind with 11% and tied with 10% of the votes so far now, Kirk McPike and Abdel El Nubi. And we watched the race for the, um, the mayoral race in Alexandria unfold throughout the night where several people were contending in the Democratic primary. And right now, uh, Aaliyah Gaskins is, is the winner uh, with 97% of the vote. She did, uh, she did claim victory uh, a short time ago with her constituents and her supporters. Uh, DC News Now's reporter Mario Carbone joining us now live from Alexandria. Mario, Gaskins declared victory earlier tonight, and the numbers reflect that. Yeah, Mark Askin says that she is humbled, excited, and just grateful to be able to call herself the winner in this race. Uh, tonight, I'm telling you this room, it was packed with supporters earlier, including the current mayor, Justin Williams, and of course, her family and friends all here uh, to watch those numbers uh, come in. Now, her campaign calling this race around 8.30 p.m. tonight, that's just about an hour and a half after the polls closed. Gaskins is currently a member of the city council, just elected in 2021. Uh, she also works with the Melville Charitable Foundation, which helps those struggling with homelessness. Now, Gaskins ran a campaign focused on listening to people, and she says as mayor, she'll work to ensure everyone thrives here in the city. Take a listen to what she had to say. As I promised on the campaign, they have new energy to look forward to. They have a leadership that is focused on bringing together diverse coalitions in our community. They have a leader that is going to be responsive and a leader who's going to work to make us a safer, a more affordable and a more accessible city. 
and there is no Republican challenger or no independent uh, running as well. So unless there is a write-in candidate, uh, she will be the official winner come November, uh, and that will also make her the first black female mayor elected here in the city of Alexandria. Reporting live in Alexandria tonight, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now. Mariel, thank you to some breaking news just into our newsroom. MLB legend Willie Mays has died at the age of 93. Mays family and the San Francisco Giants made that announcement saying he passed away peacefully today, surrounded by loved ones. Now the center fielder was baseball's oldest living Hall of Famer. His nickname was the was the say hey kid. Mays had a professional career that spanned four decades, beginning beginning with the Negro Leagues in the late 1940s. At 20, he was the 10th black player in the major league history. Mays ended his professional career with the New York Mets in 1972. And taking a look at some of our top local stories, D.C. police are searching for two suspects who robbed the pharmacy at gunpoint. Pharmacy off of Ingram Street near 4th Street in Northeast. A surveillance video from last Friday shows the suspects walk in with their faces covered. One suspect appears to sneak behind the counter and then take items off the shelf. That's when the second suspect jumps the counter with a handgun. And the police say that the suspects threatened three victims and took off with property. Police are offering up to $10,000 for information leading to an arrest. And it's official Montgomery County has its next police chief. Montgomery County police veteran Mark Yamada was unanimously approved by council today. He will become the first Japanese American to lead the department when he assumes the role next month. He replaces retiring police chief Marcus Jones.